the max zoom. Almost fully eclipsed. There you go. There you go. Fully eclipsed moon. Wow. Couldn't ask for better weather for the eclipse filming, which will happen tonight. We got a full moon. November 7th and the eclipse will occur between 3 15 a.m. and 7 10 a.m. tomorrow morning which is essentially tonight heading into tomorrow so it's November 7th right now and the eclipse will be in the early morning hours of November 8th it'll be a very high in the sky moon up near the Tropic of Cancer a very small and high moon hoping to film the lunar eclipse and show that it's not the Earth's shadow that's just a bunch of nonsense the Earth's shadow does not cause the lunar eclipse and we really don't know what causes the eclipse and that's honest Okay, so just a preface to the lunar eclipse, which is occurring in about eight, nine hours. We are looking at the sun. It is 5 p.m. I am just west of Toronto, 43 and a half degrees north latitude, and it is a full moon. So as we know, the full moon is always 180 degrees away from the sun, sun being west right now and the full moon will be directly east and what the heliocentrists will want us to believe is that this the earth is rotating backwards causing the sun to set and the moon to eventually head that way in its arc over the course of the night and in between the sun and moon will be the earth and at about 3.30 a.m., the Earth's shadow will miraculously cast, be cast upon the moon. I will be looking for things such as the angle of the shadow. I will be looking for things uh, that possibly don't make sense. Looking for things around the moon to see if I can see any evidence of the Earth's shadow as it approaches the moon. Will it block out adjacent stars? I don't know. These are things we have to consider and ask. Because I fully do not comply with the information that has been provided, which is that the lunar eclipse is being caused by the Earth's shadow. It's absolute nonsense. So, we'll see what we can film. Again, the lunar eclipse will occur in about, I'd say, eight to nine hours from now. And it'll last about three to four hours. Don't know how much sleep I'm gonna get, but we shall see. Right now, it's 5 p.m. <clears throat> okay, it is <clears throat> November 7th, just before 11 p.m. I'm doing some pre full moon filming. with the Nikon P1000. It is unbelievably clear. Perfect filming conditions. The only thing I can complain about is it's freezing cold. It's about 2 Celsius, but it feels like minus 10. A little bit of detail on the left side there meaning it's 99% not quite a hundred and for me always the last part of the moon to hold its detail is the left side so it's still waxing it's the full waxing beaver moon
just looking by where it is in the sky. I know it's on the Tropic of Cancer, where the sun is on June 21st. It is very high in the sky. I'm at 43 and a half degrees north latitude. West of Toronto. So, I just wanted to film the perfect full moon before the eclipse occurs. In about four hours. I'm going to try to sleep and set my alarm for 3 a.m. And I'm going to film whatever I film with an open mind as to what is causing the eclipse. I fully reject that it's the Earth's shadow. So what is it? That's the question. The moon is heading at a downward trajectory at the moment, so it's already reached its zenith probably about two and a half hours ago. So it will constantly be moving, apparently in a downward fashion, downward and away from me. Let's see if I can see any evidence of the start of the eclipse. So far, no evidence of the nine-hole golf course, or the telephone system, or the dune buggy course, that Buzz Aldrin faked. So, I'm going to recalibrate, pull back a bit, and wait. Houston. We have a problem. Okay, I had to restart my camera to get the remote to work. It's worth it though, because look at that. Nice smooth zoom. Four twenty AM November eighth. West of Toronto, Canada, looking at the partial lunar eclipse. Perfect filming conditions. Sometimes it's not worth zooming to the max. It loses perspective. Isn't that awesome? Wow. It's going to move the camera slightly. Gotta say, it's actually more spectacular than last year's eclipse. And this is a partial. So from where I am, west of Toronto, the eclipse, or whatever is causing the eclipse, is commencing from the upper left side. And I do not believe for one second that that's the Earth's shadow. We do not know what is causing the eclipse. And that's the truth. That's honest. I don't believe in the heliocentric nonsense model. So whatever it is that's eclipsing the moon is moving apparently more rapidly than the moon. As the moon appears to be going away from me 
It also appears to be getting lower in the sky, but it's not. It's just moving away from me. But whatever is eclipsing it is moving faster than the moon. Slightly. It's great footage right there. I'm going to zoom into the max and then go recharge my battery. Okay, I'm going to go recharge because I'm almost at a dead battery here. And due to the cold, we'll be back in five minutes. How about that? It's 4.45 in the morning. We have a very distinct line. Hopefully the focus will stay. Nope. I'm going to have to switch to me. Okay, so 4.45 in the morning, west of Toronto. Now, just trying to give perspective of what the heliocentric model says, which is that the Earth's shadow is causing this eclipse, and I do not agree. Something else is causing this eclipse. And remember now that the full moon is 180 degrees away from the sun, meaning I'm looking at the moon in the western sky, and the sun will rise in the eastern sky behind me. So, they want you to believe that the moon is being lit by the sun. And on the heliocentric model, the sun is on the opposite side of the earth, and underneath, which is causing this shadow. I do not agree with the model presented, and this observation will hopefully show why. As if the sun is below and away from me at 180 degrees, the Earth's shadow. I do not feel should be appearing like that. Without going on a long rant right now about why, because sometimes it's difficult to work out, and that's precisely why our naivety with regards to perspective has been manipulated and abused to contrive with whatever they say, because it is written. But we know that the individuals in charge of space information are filthy liars, lying about going to the moon, lying about space, lying about the distances to the sun and moon. All of that is nonsense. So. That's why I'm filming. So we don't know what is going on up there. What is this we are looking at? What is the moon? And what is this thing that is eclipsing the moon? getting pretty low in the sky so I'm going to readjust as the moon disappears behind the building there. So I just took a few still photos of the moon and the whatever it is causing this eclipse and the moon's or sorry the earth's apparent shadow not shadow was not blocking or dimming the stars in the periphery adjacent to the moon. So, I'll take a few more stills afterward, but if one was to do a mental image of the size of the Earth's shadow compared to the moon, it would reach out or project into a quite a large shadow. Consequently, 
causing the adjacent stars to the moon to become blocked out or dimmed in the same fashion we see the moon. And that's not what I saw. So whatever it is causing this eclipse is focused directly on the moon. I'm going to try to do a zoom one more time. It's almost five in the morning. I'm tired. I'm going to go to sleep after this. But I want to do some more filming because this is awesome. Okay, so I switched it to moon mode on my Nikon. Let's see if I see anything different. I'm going to change the color to a blue. I'm going to adjust the focus. Manual focus now. I think it's probably better to view it without moon mode. I'm going to switch back to normal mode. It's about five in the morning. This is really spectacular. Glad I stayed out. Don't want to zoom too much as I might lose the focus. The moon appears very small to the naked eye right now. Just gonna go with the max here while it goes out of the screen, but I'm just gonna let it play. Almost completely eclipsed by something, not the Earth's shadow. I'm looking at the angle of the shadow and the moon in relation to where the sun is, if from my perspective, directly 
behind me and below in the heliocentric nonsense model? They want you to believe that's the Earth's shadow being cast upon the moon and based upon the angles of which the heliocentric model claims, I disagree with that. I also disagree that it's the Earth's shadow because uh, I just filmed or still photographed stars within the periphery adjacent to the moon that were not being dimmed or changed color. Now to make a claim like that obviously I need to zoom in on that star and do a before and after, which I haven't, but I can test. I do, don't think that is the Earth's shadow at all. I don't know what it is. I don't believe in Rahu and Kitu. Because I have no evidence of that, of them. Other than just fairy tales and books. So, what is this? What is causing the eclipse? We don't know right now. We're learning. Remembering to turn on my microphone. Battery's almost dead. gravel so I am readjusting manually by forcing the tripod into the ground so I don't have to readjust the knob that's just spectacular wow
Here we go. Got it in the center frame. Max Zoom. Almost fully eclipsed. There you go. There you go. Fully eclipsed moon. Wow. But to the naked eye, it's still lit on the lower right portion, but to my Nikon, it's lit on the upper portion. That's strange. Hmm. So as I was saying, when I'm looking at the moon with my eye, the lower right portion is still slightly illuminated, but when I take still photos, the top portion appears to be slightly illuminated. I don't know why. It might have something to do with the camera and the way optics work. I don't know. And now, I cannot find the moon with my mic on, whereas a few seconds before, I could. So I'm just going to enjoy the moon with my eyes, not the camera. And I'm going to stay barefoot, grounded to the earth. November 8th, 8 Celsius. Very cool, cold today. It's the morning after the eclipse. It just occurred about six hours ago. And I hope to upload my footage from the Nikon P1000 tonight to my YouTube page. And it's very interesting to notice that within 2,000 kilometers of me, there was a difference in the angle of which people were observing the shadow as it eclipsed the moon and the not shadow because in no way think that it's the Earth's shadow, it's something else. So, very interesting to talk to other people about the eclipse and how they saw it last night. Um, yeah, hope to upload the footage tonight.